Hi everyone, this is Trixie Pomara Siciliano, Digital Sales Manager for the Plant Product Line. We introduced Pool Farsi of the calculations in version 8.6, and in the new release of FAST version 8.7, a new feature has been introduced to allow you to run Jet Far CFD calculations. I am going to show you how to set up and run CFD calculations for Jet Far scenarios. To do this, I will go to the Map tab of the study tree, locate 3D Geometry Files folder, right-click, go to Insert and click 3D Geometry File. You can use a range of geometry files, but for the purposes of this demo, I will be using a KFX file. Once found, click the file and hit Open. The load time varies depending on the number of shapes you have on your 3D geometry file. The 3D file containing the model surroundings appears in the 3D viewer in the workspace. Some functionality in the 3D ribbon on the menu bar will allow me to move, to rotate, and to scale the 3D model. You will also see that there is a yellow sphere which indicates the center of rotation, and its coordinates are shown at the bottom of the viewer, which shows the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates. There is also the possibility to show custom 3D objects, and you can do this by going in the Custom 3D Objects folder, right-click, go to Insert, and click Custom 3D Object Set. You can specify the parameters of your 3D object set, Click OK. Adding the custom object in the 3D model introduces a new firewall. There are two ways to add a Jetfire model in FAST. One is by utilizing the 3D viewer and another using the model stub in the study tree. To add the model using the 3D viewer, I will be utilizing the yellow sphere in the 3D viewer. To do this, I will click on the 3D viewer and point my mouse to the location of release. I will click Shift on the keyboard and left-click on the mouse. This will commit the coordinates to memory. Once this is done, I go to the Models tab of the Study 3, right-click on the Study folder, go to Insert at Center of Rotation in 3D View, and then click Standalones. You'll notice that in the standalone model I created, the east and north coordinates have automatically been pre-populated with the coordinates of the yellow sphere on the 3D viewer, except for the z-coordinates which is specified manually and I will show you this later on. Alternatively, if you already know the exact coordinates of your release point, you can directly create a model by right-clicking on the study folder, go to insert and click standalones. You'll see that the geometry are currently set at the origin, so you will have to specify this manually. In this example, I will be modeling a methane release, so I will select it in the material dropdown. Now, to create a jet for scenario, right click on the standalone scenario type, go to insert, and click jet fire. I will now start specifying the required parameters. I'll specify the parameters as 3 meters above ground. It is important to consider a release that is not on ground level, as this will result in the cloud somewhat interacting with the ground. I will then specify the inclination of jet from horizontal to be 90 degrees, and leave the rotation about the z-axis as the default, which is 0. Specify mass discharge rate at 0.5 kg per second, Post expansion jet temperature at minus 84 degrees Celsius and jet velocity at 200 meter per second. There are also other tabs within the jet fire setup window, such as the option to specify the radiation levels as well as the temperature levels. One thing to highlight is the option to specify the CFD grid parameters, which is where a user can specify the boundary of the model calculations. The default option is to leave the bounding box to be used in calculation dropdown to fast calculated, but there are other options to modify that. I also specified the wind direction in the wind direction tab, but for this example, I will be leaving it at default values. Now that the model is ready and I have specified the parameters that are needed, 
I will run the model by selecting the jet fire scenario in the study tree. Hit run CFD from the home ribbon. A new window pops up which prompts me to select one or multiple weather conditions. I will select a single weather direction then click Finish to start running the model. The complexity of the model scenarios will impact the calculation times, and the development of Jetfire release over time are shown in the Jetfire results viewer as the model is running. There is the possibility to take screenshots of each time step to see how the Jetfire develops over time automatically. And to do this, I will have to left-click anywhere on the 3D viewer to ensure that it is the active window, select Shift and M on the keyboard as soon as the run starts. The screenshots will then be automatically saved in the DNV local temp folder. Now that the model has finished running, I am going to show you the new feature in FAST 8.7 that make it easier to interrogate the results. To view results, I need to select Jetfire from the study tree and select the 3D icon on the menu bar. In this example, I am going to show you the temperature results. A new window pops up and then click Finish. There are updates in FAST 8.7, which includes the new 3D results selector as shown here, as well as improvements in the consequences ribbon bar, which shows various sliders. There is now also the ability to show the flame shape, and also 3D ISO surfaces, as shown in the image. You can also use the slider to change the temperature that you would like to display. In addition, you can also show the 2D ISO contours on the X, the Y, and the Z plane. And you can also show the offset from a region by using the slider. One final feature I would like to show is the ability to show the temperature at different locations in your contour. And you can do this by clicking Shift on the keyboard and left click on your mouse. You'll see that the temperature updates on the right side of your results viewer. Thank you and we hope that you enjoy the new capabilities in FAST 8.7.